Hello everyone, welcome to skadia.com. My name is Hira Imran and today we're going to talk about the lower limb. And before starting the lecture, let's uh, look at all the contents that we're going to cover in today's lecture. So like always, we're first going to talk about acute conditions uh, and in acute conditions, uh, we're going to uh, see some of uh, the fractures and we're going to see the, uh, the pelvis uh, fractures or the femur fractures, neck of femur fractures and all of these will be discussed in the acute uh, um, uh, part or the trauma and acute pain are related to the for, uh, are going to be covered in the first uh, section. So in acute or trauma cases, people present with uh, fractures. So pelvis fractures are very severe and serious uh, fractures. So we're going to see, uh, uh, and there's a lot of uh, blood loss associated with a pelvis fracture. We're going to talk about that as well. So uh, first of all, we're going to talk about um, a pelvis ring fracture. We're going to see what a pelvis ring is and how it's different in males and females and how uh, just by looking at the radiograph you can you can tell if it's a it's a female pelvis or a male pelvis we're going to discuss that and after that we're going to see some of the uh, fractures of the pelvis so there are uh, three uh, different types of bone making the pelvis uh, so pelvis bone is actually made of three different bones and there are uh, a number of uh, joints there a lot of ligaments uh, attached to it so we're going to talk about all of that um, in um, taking into account what happens when uh, a bone is fractured and how um, then the because of the pull of the ligaments or the muscles and there is a lot of uh, because of that strong pull the fracture is always accompanied by some displacement so we're going to see and talk about that in detail so then we're going to um, talk about different hip fractures so pelvis is is made up of those three bones and then femur is the hip bone uh, or the lower limb bone which makes which attaches to the pelvis bones at the uh, at the point of acetabulum so acetabulum is a uh, is a part of the uh, pelvis bone uh, or the pubis uh, bone of the pelvis and uh, uh, femur acetabulum uh, femur head is uh, uh, making the hip joint uh, with the acetabulum of the pelvis so we're going to then move to uh, hip uh, fractures or uh, fractures of the pelvis or and the uh, fractures of the femur the neck the shaft so we're going to uh, talk about that as well so and how it uh, appears on radiographs and how we can uh, differentiate different types of fractures um, and then we are going to talk about uh, femoral fractures. The intertrochanteric fracture will be a fracture which is between the two trochanters, the greater and the lesser. We're going to see how uh, that appears on the radiograph. We're going to see how to, um, which part is the greater trochanter and which is the lesser trochanter of femur. And uh, after uh, establishing where they, these anatomical um, parts of femur are present, then we're going to talk about what uh, an intertrochanteric femur fracture actually is and how to uh, diagnose it. Then we're going to talk about uh, pubic or my fracture. So like I said, pubic uh, pubis, uh, pubis bone actually um, uh, forms the acetabulum. The entire pelvis does, but uh, most part is of pubis bone. And pubis or my, we're going to see uh, uh, its fractures and uh, and I'm going to tell you where it's, uh, where it's present in the pelvis bone and we're going to discuss that in detail as well. So then uh, there is the pubic symphysis, which is uh, a point, uh, the inferior point where the two pelvis uh, bones actually are connected or making a joint. So the pubic symphysis is, uh, the normal range for it is uh, four to five mm. And in uh, conditions like a pregnancy for females, it is uh, increased to nine mm as well. Uh, but in normal conditions, it is in uh, from four to five mm and any um, more uh, space between uh, pubis uh, symphysis is a um, problem and can be diagnosed if you measure the, this distance and if you know the, the normal distance. So we're going to talk about that as well. 
uh, and then we're going to talk about some comminuted fractures and like I said because of the excessive pull of the um, uh, of, of different ligaments and tendons uh, at the hip there are there's always some displacement of some fragment or the entire bone associated with fractures at the hip so we're going to talk about that and um, specifically we're going to see comminuted fracture of the femoral shaft um, and see how that appears on the radiograph then we're going to move, like, that will be the end of the acute conditions. Mostly acute conditions are fractures or torn ligaments or tendons. And then uh, chronic conditions are more uh, degenerative conditions like uh, osteoarthritis or uh, some stress fractures, which are because of constant stress on the bone. So we're going to now, um, in this uh, part, let's uh, discuss the chronic conditions, different type of chronic conditions. So here, uh, it's written soft tissue masses. So soft tissue masses are um, developed over a long period of time and their diagnosis uh, is based on the growth actually is uh, is prolonged for the soft tissue masses and their diagnosis is based on history and going retrospective so that's why we uh, we consider them as a chronic condition so we're going to see how that appears on radiographs as well so then we're going to talk about some stress fractures. Like I said, stress fractures are because of constant stress over a long period of time for athletes or people who run or especially people who sprint because um, a running uh, at a uh, at a constant pace is better than running at a very fast pace and then stopping all of a sudden. So when 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 people are sprinting, they are stressing the joints more than uh, uh, slow pace runners. So jogging is okay, but sprinting isn't. So it's okay if you're trained for it, but we're going to see how um, how stress factors appear on the radiograph. So. Uh, then we're going to talk about severe hip fractures, um, which um, are in the chronic conditions, taking um, in view that we're going to discuss the chronic condition of uh, hip fractures, then we're going to discuss, again, the stress fractures of the hip. So then we're going to uh, talk about some labral tears. Uh, so labrum is the... Um, uh, is making the acetabulum wide enough for the femoral head. So like we discussed labrum in the upper limb, it's the same here. So it deepens the acetabular fossa for the, uh, for the uh, femur, uh, femur to uh, have a better surface area to move. And we're going to see how its tears are um, displayed on MRI or radiographs. It's uh, uh, it's uh, it, it can be picked on a radiograph, but it's better um, better seen or better visualized on uh, on an MRI. So we're going to see uh, uh, see it in and talk about it in detail as well. So then we're going to talk about uh, some soft tissue masses and how they uh, they appear on radiographs. There are there are some who, which are uh, which can be uh, intra uh, articular as well or intracapsular as well, and then there are some which are uh, present outside the uh, the joints uh, the joints and outside the um, uh, any muscle or tendon and just below the knee. So we're going to uh, just below the skin. Uh, sorry. So if they're just below the skin or if they are inside the joint. We're we're going to see how uh, how to pick them up on radiographs as well. So for this, uh, you need to uh, actually compare to know uh, or differentiate soft tissue masses. You have to compare the two limbs, uh, the limb with, without any uh, uh, mass and the and the one with any mass. So we're going to talk about that as well. And then we're going to talk about intra-articular lipomas, like I said. So like, like we discussed for the upper limb, lipomas are fat uh, accumulation and uh, uh, in uh, proximity with the joint uh, or inside the joint or close to the joint. So we're going to see what uh, lipomas are and how they appear on the radiograph as well. So now the true uh, chronic condition. So osteoarthritis, the degenerative joint disease of the hip, we're going to see how that appears on radiograph as we are discussing uh, uh, um, osteoarthritis in the past lectures as well, uh, considering uh, the shoulder or the elbow or the wrist. So here we're going to discuss how osteoarthritis appears on, uh, appears on the hip joint. Then we're going to talk about uh, avascular necrosis. Avascular necrosis is bone death due to um, impaired blood supply or impaired nutrient supply. So uh, a lot of factors are responsible for this. We're going to see uh, them in detail and talk about them. 
Um, so a lot of uh, diseases can actually um, cause avascular necrosis. So uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about sickle cell anemia and how it um, uh, can uh, play its part in avascular necrosis as well. Um, and then we're going to talk about uh, capital femoral epiphysis slip. So uh, I'm going to uh, actually uh, make sure that everybody understands there are uh, three um, epiphyses in the uh, in the fem femur and the uh, pelvis bone. So there is one uh, right between the acetabulum. Then there is one which is known as the capital femoral epiphysis, which is uh, uh, at the neck of the um, actually in, in the middle of the head. And then we have one in the, in the neck of the femur, which is known as trochanteric uh, epiphysis. We're going to see uh, the location, the anatomical location of all uh, three of these. And uh, we're going to specifically talk about uh, capital uh, epiphyseal slip. So obviously epiphysis is uh, present in children, so this is specifically for uh, for children and their slip is obviously for, P uh, for kids uh, who are below the age of 15. <clears throat> then I'm going to talk about some bone tumors, also chronic condition um, because they develop over time and um, initially you, you can't really diagnose them until it's very painful or the movement is restricted. So again, a uh, chronic condition. So we're going to see how uh, bone tumors uh, appear on radiographs. We're also going to see uh, uh, how they appear on uh, some nuclear scans because PET scan uh, is uh, advised if you, success, uh, if you uh, suspect some uh, bone tumors. We're going to see uh, um, and talk about that as well. So that is going to be it for uh, this uh, lecture and please to watch other videos on uh, um, on radiology series, other lectures. We're, we've talked about a um, number of conditions, the upper limb, elbow and uh, the shoulder. So please visit scotty.com.